Good afternoon and thanks for tuning in. I'm Holly Shields, welcoming you all to another edition of Calkine TV's Executive Corner Expert Talks. Today we're looking at bridging the gap between the data economy and bank with AI to make the financial system more sustainable. And to help us understand this subject in depth, we're joined by a special guest from Azen. That's a company that's redesigning digital banking through the core AI engine Abacus and business-focused AI applications across key value chains. Deng Zhao Kang is the CEO of Azen. Welcome to the show, Mr. Kang. It's great to have you with us. It's my pleasure. It's a pleasure to have you on. First of all, could you walk us through how Azen bridges the credit gap between data economy platforms and banks? Okay, so let me first define the what is the data economy in the market. So many of the economies are the moving into onto the online world. As previously, the older like economical activities have been conducted in the local streets, and then now this kind of activities are um, conducted by the online players, and also um, like uh, all the digital native uh, companies are conducting their you know, like commerce activities. On the other hand, the financial industries are traditionally focused on the very traditional the products like the mortgages and the personal lending and auto finances. But they need to, they have an inherent uh, demand to expand into the market. But there is a huge gap in the market. And on one side in the data economy, huge demand for the financial services is increasing rapidly. But on the other hand, the financial institutions are having a very strong appetite to provide the capital for this kind of uh, new type of industries. But there is a gap, actually. So the gap is um, how to understand the, uh, the dynamics of uh, data streams that is emerging in, in, uh, from the new economy. So we are uh, narrowing the gap by providing the technological platform for the both economies. That is uh, the, the concept of the bridging the gap using the AI technologies. That's great to hear. And uh, how has uh, how is this gap that's been in closing able to benefit the wider financial system in your view? Yeah, so there is a huge um, like a potential in the market. So let's think about the hundred years ago, um, like the oil industries when Saudi Arabia has a lot of uh, oil reserves, and then the but they have a lot of um, resources to um, like uh, uh, make happy, make make the uh, the world richer. But what they lack is the technology to the, to dig into the, the reserve and pull it over. Right? So that kind of technologies are um, provided by by the very specialized firms like Exxon or like uh, this kind of shell, um, this kind of oil industries. So. Um, the, the, what we are providing to the financial market is uh, is identical, uh, like uh, oil industries. And then not far from the 100 years ago, just uh, very close, uh, the shale gas and shale industries. We all know that this kind of uh, the oil is reserved under the, uh, the sea or, or, or the sand. But as a new technologies has been developed, like uh, hydrogen, like uh, pumping technologies. And uh, this because of this technology is that we we are able to extract these oils at a very affordable prices and deliver to the industries. So this is the, what is exactly uh, applicable to the financial industry. So there is a lot of uh, data in the, everywhere, and then the new technology is emerging, and the new set of financial institutions are ready to deploy the capital. So linking these three mechanisms in the one, one platform can um, like um, can create a lot of uh, like uh, synergies and provide a uh, benefits to the all societies. That's great to hear. Very good explanation there from you. So it sounds like what you're saying is that particularly the uh, the last 200 or so years of perhaps financial knowledge has today become the AI and the technology that's been able to achieve this bridge. Right. Exactly. So so what we are trying to do is that the when you go back to the very basic strategies, um, according to the um, Harvard Business School's uh, play, uh, uh, disruptive technology classes. So we need to focus on uh, the job to be done. Um, like a job to be done concept is like uh, 
as time goes by, the fundamental the demand in the market does not change. Only uh, what changes over time is the technologies. So uh, when you think about the basics, what is the in, in Hearing the demand in the market, we need a capital to grow. And the other hand, so we we can we are ready to provide a capital. So this kind of uh, to enable this kind of a technologies, not AI people is enough, but also very domain expertise, who has a very deep knowledge is how um, what is the like day to day jobs in the financial industries is very uh, required. Um, um, like a technology platform. So this kind of a domain knowledge is in the market and AI technology market. And the combination of these is uh, very crucial to technologies to enable this kind of business models. I absolutely, absolutely agree with you there, I should say. I think, um, as you mentioned, there is a, a crucial need of uh, these different uh, markets to come together. And uh, employment is definitely something that um, benefits from this. So it's a uh, certainly correct for you to say. And I'd love to ask as well, at this point, are there any particular milestones achieved by AZEN that stand out for you? Right, so we are building um, like autonomous driving car in the finance world. For example, like uh, um, in the early days of early years of the companies, we have been focused on develop uh, some massive scale of AI technologies because like thousands of AI is required to enable this kind of platform. So our abacus is focused on delivering thousands of zillions of AI algorithms that is updating real time. That is one technology stack that we have developed so far. And uh, recently we have developed the reinforcement learning, like a corrective, um, like a judgment system. So this under this system, that the, the computer, the AI system can understand the situations that is happening around the market and uh, make a corrective actions uh, by themselves. It's kind of uh, um, like a, um, like a human-like the platform. So this kind of platform is um, already um, enabling autonomous driving car, right? The cars are uh, the moving around the road and recognize the the things around the cars and uh, identify the uh, well, where am I and why I, am I in the state safe status or risk status? That according to that kind of a recognition, they are uh, the cars are controlling by themselves, right? Break or uh, change the lane. So we are building this kind of um, AI technologies in the financial sector. So in the in coming in one or two years from now on, I strongly believe that we can build a um, like a autonomous thinking machine in credit and finance industries. That's incredible. It sounds like something like that would absolutely revolutionize the financial system and the world of finance as we know it. Right. Exactly. Um, exactly. Once this kind of technology is uh, mature, I think the mature will be that the time will come in, in one or two years from now on, then the, there is a lot of um, like a financial institutions who can but cannot, who are able to but cannot uh, provide the capital in the certain industries can provide a capital using our technologies. For example, like the, the banks and small banks who has been focused on the very regional market or in the machinery market can um, enter into the new market using our platform called uh, Credit Connect, is, uh, which is the uh, banking as a services. Uh, by uh, inviting this kind of new players in the market, then we can increase the supply side of the capital in the market, which means that the, the price range can uh, decrease as supply goes up. So that can, um, the, the value that is created from this kind of supply and demand side can uh, provide the benefits to the customers in the end. So AI technology in the finance sector can inevitably can uh, like make the world uh, more, more richer. Absolutely, and we definitely look forward to seeing that. Did you say that it was perhaps the technology was one to two years away at this point? Yeah, right. All right, well, we'll definitely be keeping our eyes peeled on that and uh, everything AZEN has in store for the rest of the year ahead. But with that, I've got to say thanks very much for joining us on the show today. My pleasure.
Thank you. It's been great to have you on. That was Jung Sok Kang, the CEO of Azen. And if you missed any part of that chat, you can catch the full interview on our YouTube channel at Calcoin Media. And make sure to subscribe as well. I'm Holly Shields, reminding you to stay prized and invest wise with Calcoin.